Hey guys, I've got a fun one for you today. The uh, last question that I have yet to put stuff up for, 5.3, topic 5, circuits with ideal diodes. This one shit the hell out of me. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys, It's it, this is a pain in the ass. And as far as has been tested, this file works nearly 100% of the time. I had one instance where it, it failed with the three uh, diodes being on and ID3 was a weird value or something. But that hasn't been reproduced as of yet, so I'm just going to assume that it's 99% accurate for now. If on the off chance you do happen to get a question that doesn't suit this properly and it generates the wrong answers, I apologize. But like I've said pre in a previous thing, you use these at your own discretion, at your own risk. So, yeah. Uh, but what I will be doing, because these this this particular question last year was in the mid sem, and I think a variation of it was also in the final exam. I think as like a a, a question one style question. So I will be going through the process of how you would actually do this. I should probably need more room here, actually. Just in case. But yeah, um, just so you guys know, it, it's it's fairly methodical. And um, following following the method, it's difficult to get it wrong. Not impossible. But, you know, we'll see how we go. So basically... I'll, I'll just run through the Mathematica file first, and as I do each step, I'll explain what actually happens. Uh, so, you've got your diagram here, never actually changes, except for the values and the direction of the diodes. That's all accounted for. So, in this example, your V1 is 13, um, minus 7, R1 is 200, R2 is... 130, R3 is 6800, R4 is 1500, and then how these work, if the diodes are pointing out from the node, the central node here, you mark them as a one positive number. It could be any positive number, but just keep it as one for simplicity. Uh, and if they're pointing inwards, you make them negative one. So uh, D1 is pointing inwards, so it's negative 1. D2 is pointing outwards, so it's 1. And D3 is pointing inwards, so that's also negative 1. From there, you're done. If you trust what I've done with this uh, file. Uh, now, by hand, this would be by far the most annoying section. Uh, how you would determine whether the diodes are on or off from this ver from the very start the first steps you want to do is look at the voltages of v1 and v2 uh, d1 will be on if v1 is positive and it's pointing inwards or vice versa if if, if um, so, so you, you you look at here it'll flow from the ground through v1 R1, D1, R4, and then out. V2 here will go from here, this upper ground, R4 through D2, R2 to V2, and then down the ground again. And so we can tell just by this, D1 and D2 from our initial look will be on. That typically won't change. If you get a circumstance where one of them is off, You'll never have both of them off, so you don't have to worry about that. If you get a, if you get a, uh, a certain sense where one of them is off, you need to test uh, another thing. Uh, your you need to test the volt you need to test voltage division of the opposite voltage source. If you, this is going to be really difficult to explain, I'll just tell you in advance. If I just ramble on, try and decipher it from the Mathematica file, it is really, really confusing. And I'll just get a Word document open so I can write out some equations for you guys. Uh, 
Alrighty, get rid of this. Okay, so looking at looking at the independent source of V2, in order to get the voltage division at R4 to find the voltage in the reference node, not reference node, the central node, your equation you should know how to do buddy voltage division. Your equation looks like this. V equals V2 times R4 on R2 plus R4. That's what it looks like. That you can see is uh, replicated here in the mathematical file and for the opposite side V1 it's the same thing replacing V2 with V1 and R2 with R1 with equivalent resistors. Another check if you have D1 is if D1 is off and D2 is on you need to check the voltage at the opposite side of the um, the diode if if it's facing inwards and V1 is greater than V2, then D1 is now on. If it's facing, if it's pointing outwards, and V2, the the uh, voltage division thing you just calculated is greater than V1, then it is also on, and vice versa for the um, diode two. Um, yes, yeah, so that that's all I'll say for that. Once you've once you've figured out whether D1 is on or off and D2 is on or off, you move to the next step by uh, figuring out what uh, the voltage you have in the central thing, which is the same thing. If uh, if D1 is on, you take the uh, voltage division uh, equation that you have and you pretty much just find the value of it and if D2 is off, is on, you take the voltage division for that as well and you add them together. If D1 is on only, then you only use voltage division for D1, obviously, and if D2 is only on, you use the voltage division for D2. But if again, if they're both on, you add them together. And then what you do is that you take that value and you test it for D3. If D3 is pointing inwards, obviously the reference node is zero, Ground is zero volts. Thank you, Denise. And yeah, so if it's pointing inwards, and your V, your 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 uh, voltage division thing ends up being a negative, then D three is on. Else it's off. But if it's pointing outwards, if you if your voltage division is positive, then D three is on, or else it's off. Explaining in words is a lot more difficult than actually showing you. So, if you if you start doing it yourself, you'll realize it's not that bad. Alrighty. So, once you have that, your you know which ones are on and off. You have your value for V. You can discard that new value for V, and then you use KCL to solve for your new central node because having D3 on or off will actually affect that. So what you do is that you, you list out okay, D1's on, D2's on, blah 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 and you just do KCL, nice and easy. If D1 is on, you add uh, V1 on R1 plus R4 to the equation. Sorry, uh, that's stupid. You, you, you solve for the game. Okay, sorry, we're gonna start from the beginning because it's really confusing me just saying it this way. It's your equation is split up into four parts. You have something that you'll you should always have in the um the equation, which is V on R4, which is the voltage going in on this top branch. Adding them together uh, in the case of D3 being on the bottom branch, V on R3. And then if D1 is on, you end up having V minus V1 on R1 plus, and if V2 is on, V minus V2 on R2. Basically, you mix and match with these depending which of the diodes is on. If you have D1 on and only D1 on, then you obviously won't use the one for this won't be in it, 
and this won't be in it. If you have D1 on and D2 on only, this won't be in it. If you have D2 on only, both the uh, D1 current and also the D3 current won't be in it. If they're all on, then you'll have this entire equation. You solve for V, which is annoying, but it's a lot easier in mathematics, obviously, because it just does it for you. You solve for V, and then you use that V to then plug into find your actual currents. Sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but it does work. Once you've solved for V, if you want to find the current in D1, the equation is is the absolute value of V minus V1 on R1 for diode 2 it'll be similar, it'll be the absolute value of V minus V2 on R2 and for D3 it'll be similar to your original one the absolute value on V on R3 because you never have a negative current going through a diode. It's always positive in the direction of the diode. Alrighty. So, ignoring all that annoying stuff that you have to do by hand if you get that question in the exam, you can look back at this here. Once you've plugged in all your things for voltage, one, two, resistors, one through four, directions for the, Jesus, 11 minutes, bloody hell, directions for the diodes, shift, enter, and then that'll generate your answers. ID1 equals this, ID2 equals this, we can see that ID3, diode 3 is off, hit try, 100%. Alrighty, so it's it really is as simple as that. I'll go through another one without all the other extra crap. Hopefully this isn't the rare case that fails. Knowing my luck thus far, it probably will be, but fingers crossed for me, yeah. 1,000, 1,200, D1 is going in, D3 is going in, oh, they're all going in, okay. So only ID2 is on, the rest of them are off. Hit try, 100%, no worries. Whew, that was a long one. All right, the uh, file's up on, I'll, I'll upload it on Facebook, but it'll also be on the Dropbox. So, good luck.